In this video tutorial, we'll show you how you can quickly visualize the transformation of this ugly duckling into a beautiful residence, utilizing Vision Cell and Bonsai 3D modeling software. The project begins with a photograph of the target house and maybe a few basic measurements. Then you quickly build a 3D model using Bonsai 3D software. Then use the 3D model as a starting point to conceptualize your new design ideas directly in the 3D virtual model. The Bonsai 3D interface is easy enough to be done live alongside your client. You can finish the model with as much detail and entourage as desired to visualize your design intent. It should be noted that the Bonsai 3D model is good, clean, CAD accurate data that can be used further down the production pipeline. Before we begin, I would just like to say that all the tools used in this tutorial are covered in detail in the embedded video tutorials that come with the Bonsai 3D modeling software. We'll begin by creating a shell for the house. Select the rectangle tool and the 3D wall icon. We'll create a wall that's 40 feet by 23 feet and extrude that up 10 feet. It should be noted that you can type in numeric information when creating or editing objects at any time using either the numeric input palette located at the top of the Bonsai 3D interface or in the Tool Options palette. Now select the Roof tool and click on the top face of the wall and a roof is generated. Adjust the parameters in the Tool Options palette for the desired specifications for the roof that you need. We can use the Reshape tool to reduce the overhang on the sides of the house. Simply select the face and move it inward and we'll move them in about one foot. This allows us to reshape any object by selecting the face and moving it. Let's create the brick facade on the front. Select the rectangle tool, 3D extrude icon, and make sure the insert option is turned off. We'll create a rectangle that's 3 inches wide and 3 foot 6 inches tall. Now choose the offset segment tool, click on the top segment and drag that down about 3 inches. Then we'll use the reshape tool, click on that new face, and extrude that out about 3 inches. We did the same thing on the other side except that brick facade is 4 foot 6 tall. For the front porch, we'll just go back to the rectangle tool and create an extruded rectangle to the proper dimensions that we want. And then for the concrete slab that's on top, we'll go to the extrusion tool, which is a derivative tool which allows us to select the top face of the object and derive a new object from that top face. Then using the reshape tool, we can reshape the faces of that new object outward an additional 3 or 6 inches to create the overhang for the concrete slab. Let's put one step in there. And our porch is complete. You can place doors and windows into your object using the Place Window tool. You can select from the existing Bonsai 3D content libraries or you can create your own doors and windows. We'll place a door in the front and we'll place a couple windows on the side. Now this is a custom window that I created myself. And you can see that when you place the windows and doors that the opening is automatically inserted into the wall. For more information on creating your own windows and doors, please see the embedded tutorials in Bonsai 3D. Now that the doors and windows are placed, let's reshape the brick facade to match the door frame. With the reshape tool active, simply click on the face and we can snap it to the door frame. How about some shutters? We'll select the 2D rectangle tool again and 3D extrude icon, but make sure the insert option is off because we don't want to insert our shape into the wall. We want it to be separate. Draw the rectangle, type in 2 enter and we have a 2 inch shutter. Now I'm going to move and copy this across and notice that the automatic guides as I snap to the red guideline I can hold the shift key down to make sure that it locks along that automatic red guideline and simply snap it to the other side of the window. Let's add some materials to our model. In the materials palette scroll down to the bottom and click a blank area to form a new material. Double click on it and you can edit the parameters in the material parameters palette. Let's give it a name. Let's call it brick go into the predefined materials and simply drag the type of material we want into our material. Let's create another new material. We'll call this a siding. And there's many different libraries that come with Bonsai 3D. Let's choose the siding library. Choose the type of siding that we want. And we'll create another material for the roof. Look at the libraries and we see that there's a roof library to select the type of shingles that we want. And let's create one more material. That'll be for the shutters. Let's give that the name that we want. 
And if we look in the pre-existing libraries, I don't see anything for Shutter, so I guess we're going to have to create our own for that one. What we'll do is search the websites for the image of what we want. We can then download the image right from the website, or we can use any type of screen capture utility to capture the image from your screen. In order to use this image map as a texture for your material, you need to click on the Color tab, and then click on the Texture option. Then click on the Load New Texture icon, and load any pixel image that's on your hard drive. For example, here we have a JPEG image that we saved. Open that up, and that image map is now our new material. Applying materials to your objects is simply a matter of dragging the material onto that object. Click on the material, and drag it onto the object, and release the mouse button, and that material is applied to that object. Let's apply the shutter material to our shutters. And if we zoom in close, you'll see that the default mapping for some objects uh, may not be the way we want it. So just use the Edit Texture tool, click on the object, and we get a set of controls that allow us to reshape, rotate, and resize that texture right on the object. Let's add some detail to the side of the house. Using the Offset Segment tool, we'll offset and insert a segment from the edges of the roof. We'll apply some different materials to these new faces. Drag and drop and hold down the Command Can Mac or Control Can Windows and you can drag and drop a material just onto a single face of the object. If you need to readjust the mapping system for the object, select the Map Texture tool, click on the object, and the automatic mapping system is automatically readjusted for that object. Now let's create a gutter by selecting the Vectorline tool, 3D Extrude icon, and make sure the Insert option is turned off. Right click on the side face and lock Reference Plane so that the Reference Plane is locked to match the face of that object so I can draw right on that locked reference plane. When I'm done drawing the shape, it becomes closed, and I just simply extrude that by snapping to the other end of the roof. And there's our gutter. Let's make a path for the downspout of the gutter by choosing the vector line tool, 2D icon, and make sure the insert option is turned off. Let's unlock the reference plane that we locked earlier by deselecting the lock reference plane icon. Now I'll right click on the side of the gutter and relock the reference plane on the side of that face. Now with the vector line tool active, I'll click on the bottom of the gutter and I'll simply be drawing on that locked reference plane. Hold down the shift key to lock it along the red automatic guideline and I can simply snap to the bottom of the brick wall so the line extends to the bottom of the house. Then we'll sweep a source shape along this path. Unlock the locked reference plane. We'll zoom in and create a 2D source for the sweeping operation. Let's use the Rectangle tool, create the shape that we want, and then use the Fillet tool and the Line Editing tools to add a bevel on the edges of the rectangle. Then use the Sweep tool, select your face, select the path, and that source shape will sweep along the path. We can make any adjustments we want to the sweep, and we can also move it into the proper location. Let's add some landscaping to our scene. Create a brand new material, and in the landscape library of materials, we can choose the type of grass that we want. And let's create a plot of land. Use the rectangle tool, draw the shape that we want, and we'll extrude that downward, maybe about a foot, and there's some grass. Plant some trees using the place content tool and selecting from either the abstract tree library or from the realistic trees that come with Bonsai 3D. Or of course, you can create your own. Select the tree that you want, and there is a Align with View option, so when you place the tree, you can see that it will always align with your current camera view angle. To enhance the detail of your display, choose the Shaded Full option. You can add as much detail and entourage as you like. It should be noted that you can save predefined site models that contain grass, trees, and landscaping, then import them into your model. In the display options, change the background to a predefined image or you can use your own. You can also increase the map texture pixel size to increase the resolution and clarity of your materials. And here's our final model of the original house. This concludes Part 1, Modeling the Existing Building. Please see Part 2, Modeling the New Building where we use this 3D model as a starting point to conceptualize our new design ideas directly in the 3D virtual model.